Welcome back to State of Decay 2 and the Assembly. Uh, last episode, I was running around with Creighton here. Creighton the pig cow man. Uh, and I was trying to find all of the plague hearts that I need to kill on the south side of the map. Uh, there weren't very many on the east side because that's where I started. Uh, I have not yet explored the north side of the map. And I did just remember, by the way, that I have been pursuing a bounty that was all about uh, making enclaves into my allies. And so I'm kind of... I'm kind of debating here right now because there's two needs that I have. One is uh, that I want to complete this bounty that says, you know, get enclaves to be allied with you. But on the other side, I also really need a mechanic. And I would get three mechanics if I just failed this mission uh, with the drag racers and didn't, uh, you know, and didn't make them my allies. But do I need three mechanics? Maybe I don't. Uh, maybe that, that might actually be a little bit much, uh, especially considering that I'm trying to, you know, keep a profit on food making. So, okay, here's what I think I'm going to do today. I'm going to switch characters because Creighton's exhausted. Uh, and then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to try to complete this mission for the drag racers um, in the middle of plague territory and next to uh, an infestation, which is actually kind of scary. Uh, we'll see if I can survive doing that. Uh, and then once we're done with that, uh, we'll go and explore the north end of the map and see if we can find the remaining plague hearts. Uh, it's always possible that I've, you know, that there's some plague hearts somewhere that I'm just, I, I, I missed and I haven't found it. But hopefully we'll know where all the plague hearts are, and then we can get down to the business of trying to, um, uh, of trying to make progress towards our, uh, towards our final legacy. So, one thing I'm definitely going to do, though, uh, this Preppers 1022 that Creighton has been using is amazing. Uh, and so I'm gonna switch Creighton out so he gets the 1020 the vanilla 1022 carbine. We're gonna leave that Preppers 1022 in the supply locker so other people can use it. And then let's switch to Izod. Uh, the reason I'm choosing Izod is because Izod is a gunslinger, uh, just like Creighton. And I was finding that I really, really benefited from uh, the fact that uh, that Creighton was able to just you know annihilate zombies, particularly plague zombies around him while he was uh, exploring. I'd like to be able to do that, uh, to continue to do that, and that means that I want Azad. So let's uh, let's have a look at Azad's inventory actually before we go. So what has he got right now? So he's got an he's got a suppressed AR-15, which if we've got enough ammo for it, yeah, we do actually have a fair amount of ammo for this gun. So let's let's reload it. Let's make sure that we're bringing all the ammo we can. Okay, so we've got a good plan. For uh, for dealing with uh, a lot of plague zombies, let's also grab him enough heals. But then let's leave his inventory otherwise fairly open, um, because I, I actually, you know what? Let's bring. I don't. Rem I think one of my characters brought in this fire these fire bombs as legacy characters, because I don't know what he's gonna have to deal with. I've forgotten what mission this is. Uh, so because I don't know what he's gonna have to deal with. It's probably a good idea to bring some a backup plan with fire. I don't know if we're going to need the fire. And I'm actually going to avoid using it if I can. But it's just a good idea. Better safe than sorry, right? So we're going to head off. Try to maybe make enough progress with these folks so we can complete the bounty. Or, uh, or maybe at least complete the bounty soon. Make progress towards completing the bounty. Again, I've, I always forget the course that these mission arcs take. And so I've forgotten what's happening next in the story of the mechanics or the drag racers as they're called in this campaign. Uh, so Cogs asks, you know, even though uh, I, I think failing this mission would not get me my Enclave Alliance uh, bounty, if I had a recruiting bounty, would it count for that? Yes. So adding anyone to your community under any circumstances, whether it's via a mission or whether it's via some other means, that always counts as recruiting a character. All right. So we've got them here at seconds. Let's, um, oh, hello. You got a bunch of zombies that are following my car. Okay, where is everybody? Ah, hey there. Taniqua. Okay, somebody went out to scout. They're gone too long. Sure, let's find them. Oh, perfect. They're up exactly where I want to go. Towards the north. 
Oh, and you'll notice that I've already found a new plague heart. That's because I've been driving a survey car. Last time I came up here, I, I at least I'm pretty sure this is why. Last time I came up here, I wasn't driving a survey car, so I didn't have the extended range that the survey car gives me. But now that I'm driving a survey car, I'm detecting things like plague hearts around me at a much wider radius. So let's come over here. So it looks like they're not here. Yep. And it looks like there's nothing here to scavenge either, so... Actually, I don't think I'll get back in the car. I'd rather keep the car... You know, if I do end up getting into a lot of trouble with zombies, I'd rather keep the car a little further away. <laughs> so they can lead the zombies on a merry chase and... Oh, what? And maybe not have them, you know, climb all over my car as I'm departing. All right, I made some noise, but I think I can keep the zombies at least mostly out of here while I'm scavenging. Okay, so they're definitely in the next building. Oh, crap, that was quick. At least these aren't plague zombies, though, so I'm way less scared of them. Regular zombies can injure you in the Nightmare Zone, which I think is not actually true in the lower difficulties. We've got, you know, injuries in the lower difficulties are mostly from freaks. But uh, in Nightmare, you do, you can get injuries from regular zombies, which is what makes them a long-term threat. Uh, Short-term, you know, they can do health damage, and I can recover the health damage, and, and, and most of what a, a regular zombie can do is not that scary. Hmm. Oh, so Renathcourt asks... Uh, if adding a recruit, uh, adding a survivor by any means counts towards the recruitment bounty, uh, why is the, uh, the the morale bonus from recruiting so uh, inconsistent? So I didn't actually know that the morale bonus uh, from recruiting is inconsistent. It could easily, I mean, that's one of the things about um, no the way, just the details of the way something can be implemented in a video game. Like there's sort of this event that fires off uh, when you add a character to your community that, you know, that we're probably keying off uh, to recognize when you've done that for the sake of the bounty. But that sort of event might not be what we're using in other contexts. Like, it could be that what we're doing is uh, that, that maybe the uh, the systemic um, recruiting, the, the, you know, the recruiting that you can do just any time, uh, you know, with 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 a bounty that oh, sorry, with with an enclave that you've got a relationship with, uh, that kind of or the recruiting that you like can pay influence for if you don't have a great relationship with them. Um, oh, sheesh! Another siege. It's happen all the time. Um, that kind of recruiting uh, that probably has built into it some effect of morale, but I'm betting that mission recruiting maybe doesn't, or maybe it's vice versa. I'm not sure. But yeah, those are actually different events, and so like. You can implement two different things in a game that have similar effects, but that are also distinct. And depending on, you know, the details of how you implement something that's meant to respond to those events, yeah, you could you could get wildly inconsistent results. That's just, oh man, games are complicated. Oh, oh, that's right. I can get him to join us instead. I forgot about this mission. But I forgot what the consequences of our recruiting Tom. So I do want a new mechanic. And he is an engineer. Seems like he's probably pretty good. But I forgot if this is going to screw me over and prevent me from being allies with the Enclave. So, uh, Red of Court, you're making a bunch of suggestions for, like, how we could, you know, fix it. How, like, why don't, why not implement it this way? And, like, yeah, I think if we look back on it with that, with that goal in mind, absolutely there would be a way, a better way for us to implement it. <laughs> I think that the problem, one of the problems is that a lot of these features get implemented at vastly different times during the development. So it could easily be that when we implemented, you know, the, the morale system, uh, you know, that different options were available at the time than were available when we implemented the bounty system. And, in fact, it could be that the bounty system you know, motivated us to create a universal event that we could use that we didn't have back when we implemented the morale system. And so the morale system is still sitting there cruising along with old-fashioned tools 
Whereas the bounty system created new ones that we just haven't backported to every possible place where we could have used them before, which, you know, will be really time consuming. And even just thinking of the cases is like, I mean, it never occurred to me that there might be a, a, an inconsistency with that morale bonus because it's a minor part of the game we just don't think about a lot. Okay, so uh, look, Coalition, I think I did uh, try that out briefly, but uh, the, the, the idea of, of kicking a zombie in the butt, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try a little bit later. So. Uh, I'm sitting here questioning whether or not hmm, you know, having that mechanic does feel really valuable. But okay, Malatur is pointing out that I can always recruit later. So so Malatur is suggesting that I should maybe take Tom back with me and and keep them in the communities, uh, keep them in their enclaves, so that I can make them my allies and then later consider recruiting. That's a good suggestion. I think I'm going to go with Malatur's suggestion. I'm done talking. I just can't handle people anymore. Sorry to hear that. Be seeing ya. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so he just said no, but I did my best. So I think, hopefully, Taniqua still likes me after that. Um, uh, what the? Really? Where? Oh, hi. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah. Too many zombies. Oh, I fired three times because there were three zombies, but uh, actually I killed two of them with one shot. So that was unnecessary. Holy crap, why so many zombies? Okay. I'm kind of abandoning my car right now because um, getting in the car with this many zombies on me, not often a good plan. Oh, sheesh, get, get away. Okay, hold on. I'm not that far from the mechanics, actually. So let's just run back to the mechanics. Let them help me deal with these zombies. All right, let's let, yeah, let's let these guys deal with it. I'm not gonna... Waste all of my bullets on these zombies. Right. Okay, it looks like the rest of them actually kind of lost my trail. So let's see what Taniqua thinks. He's alive, probably not coming back. I'm gonna be sick. Maybe I was too harsh. Hmm. This project will be a lot harder short handed. Bye, stay safe. All right, they're still friendly. So I haven't made a lot of progress towards my ultimate goals, but that's fine. That's not the only thing I was here to do. Uh, oh, you know what? I should probably, since I'm here, I should probably try to do something about this infestation. Okay, so uh, the Beard Power asks, can we remove the outpost limit? Uh, well, I mean, we've got a whole system built up around raising it, uh, you know, like like picking up, you know, people or equipment or upgrades in order to raise the limit. So all of that stuff, that entire sort of upgrade track would kind of go away um, if we if we just removed it entirely. And I, I don't know, I, I, I don't like the idea of losing that. Like, I feel like that's actually an interesting way to sort of like start with smaller, simpler capabilities and have your, your community grow over time um so i'm not really did did i do oh i just oh the screamer was the first one i killed when i came in i was kind of confused i was like wait a minute i thought there was a screamer here oh get off me Okay, okay, that counted as ending the uh, infestation. Whew. So uh, Necra212 asks, I've heard that for weather systems to be implemented in this game, uh, you need to 
you need to set up your assets in a completely different way. Can you explain that concept? So I don't actually have the expertise to explain that concept in detail. Uh, that is the realm of, of technical art, mostly, uh, sort of, and so, so a lot of, you know, when I talk about, yeah, you know, we, we couldn't, we couldn't implement uh, a weather system very easily or very cheaply right now because it would have such a, such a, you know, big effect on the way that our assets are created and, and it would be so much, you know, uh, uh, sort of rework. By the way, am I, if I just left my car far behind, I totally have, I've seen that you're trying to. Uh, scavenge with no room in my inventory and no vehicle. So let's uh, go fix that. I'm going to go back and get my car. Um, but yeah, so the details of that are something that, that I actually, I feel nervous trying to explain because I've got a rough understanding of it, but not enough to, you know, if you ask a tech artist about it, they could definitely give you a much uh, clearer response. But basically, I mean, if you think about, you know, um, some of the problems that I know are real are things like, you know, when you when it's raining outside, it's not just that you want to see raindrops in the air around you and clouds overhead. You also want to see puddles on the ground and, uh, you know, things looking wet, uh, but things that are under shelters not looking wet. Um, and, you know, like, like there's like, you know, this uh, there's a like there was a carport over here. And, oh, like this shed, for instance. I mean, I'm in here. I'm kind of outside. But I'm also kind of inside. And if it was raining, you'd kind of expect the ground in here not to be covered in puddles, but the ground out here to be covered in puddles. And that's a big problem to solve. Um, if you have the kind of, you know, landscape in your game where there's a lot of, um, you know, like all, all these things are like procedurally generated, where you're procedurally generating puddles on the ground based on the topography. I mean, that's great. That's not a thing we're doing right now. And it'll be a big elaborate system. If you don't have a system like that, uh, which I think most games don't do, then you have to manually place those puddles. You know, you have to say, okay, a puddle goes here, a puddle goes here, a puddle does not go there, or this is wet, this is wet, this is not wet. If it's snowing, you know, you have to say like, oh, snow collects here, snow collects there, it doesn't collect there. It's basically like doing a once over of the entire map uh, to try to make those weather systems work. Now, if when you're first creating the map, that's just a part of your workflow and every single thing you build, you, you build into it you, you, and, your, and your tools really uh, help you to build into it where the rain goes, where the snow goes, that's, and answering those sort of questions, um, then you know, that's, it's a pretty efficient way to handle it. But if you're taking an already built map where you made a bunch of assumptions about not having to answer those questions, and then you try to hack in a weather system after the fact, you, you have to you know, solve those problems in all these different local edge cases with, you know, that were all built not knowing in advance what the problems were going to be. And so you're going to end up with a lot of places on the map that are really, really hard to solve because they were built in a time when you didn't have to worry about weather systems. So something like a weather system, which is just really fundamental to how you would build an area, um, is something that you really want to do. You want to decide you have a weather system at the beginning of the process. Um, and, uh, and then build everything with that in mind, rather than trying to go back through and retrofit an entire map with every single detail being a potential place where you could make a mistake and miss something or screw something up. It's just much, much safer and, and much less expensive to do it from the outset. Oh, oh, that's right. So La Coalition uh, is reminding me that I've got a bounty to kill screamers with fire. Um, and so next time I run into a screamer, since I have uh, a, a Molotov in my inventory, I should probably make sure that I actually use that Molotov on the screamer. Okay, so there's another Plague Heart that I found. Cool, cool, cool. Let's go up to that billboard. I think that's probably going to be the most efficient place to land, though. Because billboards have such a narrow rate uh, 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 reach... And because the survey car has such a wide reach, I'm not actually certain how much benefit I get from driving a survey car up to a uh, billboard and then climbing the billboard. The billboard does have a little bit more reach, but not by an enormous amount. Um, but, you know, it's good to be thorough. So we're going to drive up to this other billboard. I think we can probably skip this middle billboard here and just drive up to the next billboard. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? What was that? No, 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 no. Get off, get off, get off, get off. Get off. All right, let's go deal with you. 
Yeah, so there's another build. Oh, oh wait, that's a cell tower. I thought there was going to be a second billboard along the way. That's a cell tower. That's a better target. Let's go over to the cell tower. You know, another reason, by the way, going back to that question about whether we could raise the outpost limit, I mean, what we did instead of raising the outpost limit was give you upgradable outposts. So, like, right now, you can get about, like, three times as many resources out of the existing list of outposts than you could get originally. You just have to spend the time to uh, the time and the resources to upgrade them. And again, I keep forgetting to put things in my trunk. So, well, that wasn't that super valuable. I'm not going to run back to the trunk now. But uh, that was dumb. Though, actually, I might have already filled my trunk, come to think of it. I don't remember what's in there. I'll have to check. So, Cavalician is pointing out there's two weapon crates and a cool location below the red bridge that's north of me. Okay, I'll have to keep my eye open for that. I was thinking that once I've uh, scouted this whole area up here in the north, I might very well go and try to uh, chase down some of the stuff that Cavalician has been uh, pointing out to me lately. Okay, yeah, so cell towers have a much longer reach than billboards. Oh, it's a Rames. Cool. I'm uh, missing one site, probably. Nope, a couple. There we go. Okay, so it looks like these are on the edge of this plague heart that is down here. But there isn't another plague heart up here, so that's good to see. Wait, when you said Red Bridge to the north, was it back when... Is it this bridge? Because it's to the east of me now, but it might have been to the north when you uh, said that. Or are you talking about, like, is there a bridge up here? I haven't, I don't think I've explored up here very much. Let's actually see what that is. I don't even know. I don't know if that's what Coalition was pointing at, but I'm actually curious. I've, I've got no idea what that what that little bridge-looking thing. Oh, Coalition is saying that it's the exit bridge. I didn't look all the way. Ah, up here. Is that what you're saying? All right, yeah, we'll poke around up there. Uh, where's my car? Dude, where's my car? Okay. Ah. Zombies chasing me. Stop it. Get away. All right. Oh, no! Ah, dang it. I was waiting for that guy to attack me. Ugh. I was waiting for that guy to attack me so that I could dodge him. I didn't realize he was going to do his very difficult to dodge uh, bite attack. I should have been more aggressive on him. So I've almost, I've almost got Blood Plague. So we're getting out of Plague territory. We're unlikely to run into uh, Blood Plague zombies up here. Okay, so... Oh, I didn't realize you could subvert the exit volume and go down here to the bridge. That's interesting. I love it when I, you know, when somebody points out something in, in the map that I didn't even know was a thing. This is a pretty neat little place. Wait a minute. Ah, that's probably what you're talking about, isn't it, Coalition? Ah, look at this. Weapon crate. Just some books. All right, well, let's... Oh, you know what I've got? I just realized. I've got a repair kit now. I've got two repair kits now. That is incredibly valuable because... I've got that trekker that I had to abandon before. And now I can go back and get it. So I might, I might make a, a little bit of a mission out of that at some point. Uh-oh. Bruno just started a fight because Bruno's a jerk. That's right. So that was one reason, I just remembered, that's one reason why I built this latrine. So that we could try to improve our morale. So right now, because of Bruno being a jerk... Oh, wait. I just... Pfft, I just... Up, wait, hold on. Let's not upgrade that quite yet. Let's... Yeah, no. I don't have any good... All right. Yeah. You know what? Let's do this. Let's upgrade our lounge. Now, that puts us... Really low in materials. Oh, wait. I, it just occurred to me. Did I miss? Yes. 
I, I, I completely skipped a siege. I wasn't even paying attention. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. I lost some ammo, but we're cool. All right. So there probably, yeah, there is definitely around here, up here somewhere, there's another plague heart. But Izzad is in poor shape in terms of sickness. Wait, Coalition is saying there's another crate here? Where? Did I pass it already or is it ahead of me somewhere? Because I do want to get Azad home without getting him blood plague. I'm really low on meds and I don't want to have to use another cure on him. Okay, Coalition says it's ahead. Oh, this little fort looking place? Okay, there's a... You gotta be careful, there's a bloater over here. Anybody else? It's so funny. I literally did not know this existed. Thank you, Coalition, for pointing this out. Um, let's let that thing calm down. I'm not seeing immediately. Oh, wait, there's a... Okay, there it is. Right over here. I'm impressed that you remember where all this stuff is, Coalition. This is not the kind of stuff that I'm good at remembering. Okay, we've got another... Fine Italian wine. And then, oh, I don't have... Ah, uh, whatever. Grab a noodle knife. Uh, okay, okay, we're good now. So, we're gonna get Izzad home. And actually, I mean, we've been doing this uh, long enough. This might be an okay time to take a break. So, yeah, so let's... Let's head back home, but let's head back home along the road and drive kind of slowly and see if we can pick up more plague hearts. So, because we've got the survey car, well, I'm not going to worry about trying to get out of the car to um, to climb up billboards and things like that, because billboards aren't that valuable anyway. You know, like I said, their, their range isn't that much wider than the survey car. But we can just use the survey car to see if we can pick up more plague heart locations while we're driving home. So let's, okay, here's the, right. We'll take the, we'll take the tracks back down. There is definitely a plague heart. Oh, okay, that's, no, that's the one I've already discovered. So we're gonna go across the bridge and then drive around that neighborhood on our way home. Then we'll swap out a Zod and we'll do another episode Maybe we'll do an episode where I go looking for my um, for my trekker. I'll just go on foot to try to find my broken trekker. And this is just gonna be a compact cars only community. Um, and then I'll take that trekker down to try to scavenge for some more resources that I need. Okay, I was gonna drive slowly, but I just heard a feral, so maybe that's a bad plan. Look at all these freaking zombies, man. Nightmare zone for the win. So, yeah, so I'm driving slowly, as slowly as I can, in order to maximize the detection range of this car. Without getting zombies on me. So we have not found... Okay, so I'm betting that the plague heart is to the west of me. So let's drive down this, but then we'll drive a little bit to the west... See if we can find that plague heart that's turning all these icons red. And then we'll head home with Azad. Oh, so Colision is saying that actually he suspects... Oh, up here. That Yeah, that might easily be where the plague heart is. That's a good point. Actually, let's just... If that's true, let's go Let's go prove that to ourselves. Let's get... Let's head up that direction. Let's mark where we're going. Up near the near the police station. I think that that is very likely. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there actually was visi like visible evidence of that that w when we were passing by that I just didn't notice. So, head over this way. Okay, so there's the police station base, and there was a neighborhood to sort of the northwest of that base that might very well contain a play car because it's unexplored. Oh, there's a bloater. Let's stay away from that dude. 
Seriously, hitting a bloater right now with his odd would probably kill him. Ah, no! We are at the northern edge of the play cart. Of the play territory. So no, this is not actually where it's gonna be. It'll be south. So let's head south. This was the area to the west of my original path that I was gonna explore anyway, so we'll just head down this way. I'll just stop periodically to uh, extend my survey range. Aha! There it is. And that one does explain most of the red icons around here. So I think we might be good. I think we might have actually found what we we're looking for. And it's time to take Azad home. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, more reasons to head home. <laughs> There's ferals out here. All right. Let's drop off some stuff. This and this and this and this and this and that and that and that and these. All right, cool. Reload our gun. Okay, so it looks like our morale isn't too bad. Um, and we're working on upgrading our lounge, which is, which is great. We've picked up some materials, which you, know, you can't see that right now, but we've picked up some materials to replace the materials that we spent building that lounge. So we're in a pretty decent shape. And we also made progress, um, you know, finding plague hearts on the map. And I don't think I see any red ones that are not ex like red icons that are not explained by plague hearts that I've already found. So I think we might have found all the plague hearts. Seems like a decent chance we found all the plague hearts. So that's good. I mean, I could always be surprised, you know, kill the plague hearts we've seen. And then there's one more left in some weird corner I didn't think of. But I I'm feeling pretty successful right now. Wait, who's this? The occupants. Ooh, yeah, they're allied. Cool. Um, anyway, so what is our next set of goals? Well, we should always keep our uh, infestations under control. So that's a potential worthy goal. I was thinking about trying to head over here to uh, fix up my broken trekker. And actually, once we get the broken trekker, uh, another thing I've been thinking of doing was coming down here. Because no, Co Coalition has been really, really... Uh, jumping all over me about coming down here to get a bunch of materials. Is this where the materials are, Coalition? Um, so I'll come down and get some materials, some uh, some medicine, some of the other sort of core uh, resources that I need using my newly repaired Broken Trekker. Okay, so actually, so he's saying that the spot that I need to search is southwest of Whitney Field and west of the weapon store. So if this is the weapon store... So, so is it this place or is it further west? Is it like over here with these houses? Um, there's a lot of different places it might be. But I will give... Oh, the four offices. Coalition is saying it's this area up here. This little strip mall. Okay, well, that'll be our probably our final destination uh, for our next episode. But for right now, let's wrap up this episode with a subscribe button. Uh, and a link to the next one. So if you're watching later on YouTube, you can click around on stuff. Uh, if you're watching me live, of course, we're just going to move right on and, uh, and make another video at this moment. So um, yeah, join me for that.